right boys and girls today we are going to draw a cool cat Pete the cat or you can actually draw his buddies but we're going to do the sunglasses first so this project is all about overlapping and layering so the sunglasses are the first thing we're going to do and then we're going to draw the portrait of the cat or the squirrel or grumpy toad behind so these are magical so what we're going to do is we're going to draw an oval and I'm actually going to use a marker because I know that you want to see this. So I'm going to use my marker, but you can do yours in pencil first. Now I'm going to do an oval and another oval. Okay, now I'm drawing mine kind of sideways. Then around the ovals that you've done, you're going to do it again. So go around, it's a bit like a, um, a train track line. They are parallel lines. So go around like that and you're creating the lens frame. There we are. Then draw a little curve like that and do it again, again parallel, and then bring out the, just the side of the sunglasses on each side. Pretty cool, all right? Next thing, you're going to draw a straight line up and bring it down. Do the same on the other side, straight line up, bring it down. These are the cat ears and a curve for the top of the head. From here, just draw a little tiny line, and again, little tiny line, and then bring it across, okay? He's very angular, very triangular shaped, using nice organic shapes here actually. And then bring his neck down, okay? Now my neck, I've probably done him a little bit too long, but that's pretty cool. I'm gonna stop him there, and I'm gonna take him all the way to the bottom. And then his nose, is a triangle as well. Okay, so there's Pete the cat. Now if you want to, you'd actually draw a buddy of his next to him. But I'd like you as well to actually create your own environment for him. And you can use your imagination, whatever you want to add. I'm actually going to draw a very silly tree. I'm gonna put some apples in it. And then the next thing, we're actually going to start using um, medium that we're going to actually color and it's going to be markers. And I'm going to show you a little trick what we can do with these markers afterwards. Now that I've got it coloured in, um, I'm just going to tell you that you're actually great to use markers that do not work too well because you're going to turn this drawing with coloured markers into a painting. And you can see I haven't coloured it in totally, I've left little white areas because normally I'd be saying, oh, you know, you've not coloured to the edges or, you, you know, your colouring's going in all different directions. This doesn't matter today because you're going to get yourself a brush and if you haven't got a brush you can actually do it with q-tips or if, if you've got a cotton ball as well anything at all that can take some water and then you're going to brush or rub a q-tip over your markers and you're going to turn that into a more soft technique and soften up those lines so where I've been painting or drawing actually and I've scribbled it I can soften it with the water and blend it in I actually, with that, all the smaller areas, it would be really cool actually to use a Q-tip so that it doesn't bleed in, especially where you're using yellow against blue, if you have, like me, you don't want those 
sunshine rays to turn green okay and then constantly change your water out so it's nice and clean while you're doing this technique so I'm going to continue and do this and see what it looks like at the very very end boys and girls